much and just blocked out this. Well, it's because I walked in front of it. Or you did? Yeah. Oh, we're getting something now. Your chat is huge. Well, good afternoon or good evening, everyone. Carrie Allen at Photography Schoolhouse, back again with our pres live presentation tonight. I know we're starting a couple of minutes late. You know how technical glitches like to, uh, like to affect us. I'm joined tonight by our guest presenter, James Hodgins. James, as you probably know, he's been with us several times before. James is a co-founder of No BS Photo Success. He is an internationally uh, recognized and award-winning photographer interplanetary photographer and is going to a Halloween party a little bit later tonight. <laughs> um, I'm always honored when James is here. He's an incredible photographer. Uh, he lectures and teaches extensively. So I'm so glad when he comes over here and shares his time with us. Tonight our subject is how to photograph the single female. One of the things that I get from time to time, somebody who just wants a nice picture. Not a model, not somebody who's building a portfolio. They just want a nice picture for themselves. Maybe it's for their Facebook. Maybe it's for a dating site. Whatever their purpose is, they just want a nice portrait of themselves. James has agreed to come in and demonstrate how he does this kind of session. So James, thank you for joining us. Thank you very much. Honor to have you here. So, it's all okay, yours. Yeah, get out. Uh, I'll ask one question. Can everybody hear me? I want to make sure that people can hear me. And I'm going to do my little motion tests here so if somebody can type in so we can see. We can kind of just make sure that all the cameras are going. Can we check that camera? Loud and clear. This camera's good. People can see me on this because it's magic. So we're all good? Yep. Okay. All right. Well, thank you very much, everybody. Uh, again, my name's Haji. Uh, you know, I, I will correct Kerry on one thing. He says I lecture and I speak all over the place. It's kind of not true anymore. I've kind of taken a hiatus on that. I actually only do it for no BS members and you guys. So uh, everybody else, they don't matter. Only you guys matter and, of course, my no BS guys. So it is a privilege to be here. I love coming here. Uh, as some of you have seen my previous webinars, I walk a lot. I talk a lot. Uh, you know, that's just me. I'm a little bit high energy. So today we're going to photograph the single female. I keep on saying single white female because of the movie, right? So the single white female, except they're not scary and they're not psycho or anything. Okay, so the single female, I get asked a lot too, people want to come in and they just want uh, a single portrait. And like Carrie said, it's usually for their Facebook or a dating site. Now, uh, a little bit of business speech on this, it's really sometimes not profitable to bring somebody in to have one shot done, um, you know, even though it is only going to take a few minutes. What I'd like to do and what I've done in the past with my business headshots is I make an event out of it. So for those of you who are actually looking to maybe do this, make a Facebook day or something where everybody can come in and you can set it up like an assembly line type thing. Everybody comes in, gets a shot. It's uh, you know low money but high volume. So in the end, it is very profitable and you make a whole event out of it. Uh, and Usually word spreads pretty quick around Facebook if you're going to do something like that. So just a one little uh, word of advice on, uh, on that. If my voice does start to drop down a bit, somebody please notify me and I will talk a little bit louder. I'm still fighting a cold. It's winter here. It's like eight degrees, which is freezing cold to uh, all you U.S. people that don't get snow. And pretty soon we're going to have snow. So I'm still fighting a cold. So we're going to start with, um, you know, uh, lighting and photographing uh, the single female. And this is very similar if, and I might repeat myself in a little bit uh, for those of you that watched my webinar on the business portrait. Because it's kind of, you know, I do the kind of the same thing. Uh, so if I am, well, too bad. It's good. You should know it. And re repetition is always good. So if you have any questions during the webinar, you know, please feel free to type it in and ask. I'm going to be honest with you. I'm winging this. I'm winging this 100%. I did not even think about what I was going to do. I'm just, uh, I, I've just met my subjects like not even two minutes ago, 
And I'm being honest with you, so I didn't plan to rehearse any of this because this is kind of what happens in the studio, right? So I'm going to show you exactly what I do. So it's not pre-recorded. I don't have anything set up. So when you guys see my picture and say, wow, he probably set everything up beforehand, and that's why it looks so good. Um, but I'm going to go through everything with you guys from each of the lights we use and the lighting patterns. So Nat, we're going to start with our lovely Nat. Where are you? Everybody, this is Nat. You've probably seen her before. I just met her today. So she's going to be my first subject. And then we're going to do Brie, and then we're going to do Marianne, who's behind the scenes right now. So we've got three, and basically all the fundamentals and principles are always going to be the same. Okay? I treat everybody the same. So first thing I want to show you is, well, I'm going to talk a little bit about posing first. And then I'm going to talk about light patterns, because I think that's very, very important. Now for posing a woman, you know, you've heard it before, there's masculine and there's feminine posing, right? Masculine obviously makes a person look more masculine, and feminine makes a person look a little more feminine. Now, how would I demonstrate the masculine pose with you? I'm not going to. Can you step out for one second? Come in here for a second. I'm going to show something. With the female, with the male, I should say, you can actually, when you're, when you're posing a male, there's always there's one like type. You've got to make the guy look manly, plain and simple, right? There's only one way to do that, make him manly. The female, she gets away with both. She can use a masculine pose or a feminine pose. It all comes down to the head tilt. Just grab a seat. Turn this way just a bit. Now, I've got a big light here. I don't know if you can see. You can just see the side of it, okay? This is a big softbox. I think it's what, four feet? It's, a, it's, it's the big honking softbox. So I'm just going to... It's the camera left, okay? If I was shooting a male, I would always have him turned into the main light at about 45 degrees. Turn this way. I would not do it that way. And I'm going to tell you why, and you'll notice afterwards. So just turn back this way. So this is just to show, I know this is not a female, this is just to show the masculine pose. See how he's sitting just like that? That's fine. Just lean forward over your, over your side. Good, good. Turn your face right to me. Good, good, good. Tilt your head that way just a bit. Okay, this is very masculine. It's, it's manly pose. He's got a nice posture here. He's got the perfect head tilt. I see this a lot. You can pose a woman just like this, and she'll look very feminine in the manly pose. Okay, I don't like using masculine and feminine. I say manly pose. Okay, do one little thing. Take the top of your head and tilt it two inches that way. Half that. So that slight little two inches tilt of the head just made him look a bit more feminine. You cannot do that with a guy, okay? So whenever you're doing the guy in masculine pose, just a little bit like that. Okay, perfect. If you were standing up, stand up. Same thing, just like cross your arms. Just tilt the head just a bit. Good, good, good. And I can do the same thing with a woman. Tilt your head that way. Good. Turn your body right around this way. Cross your arms again. Turn your face back to the light. Keep turning to turn. It looks a little bit feminine, right? Okay, but it's going to work with Matt. Walk out. Okay. Natalie, come grab a seat here. Actually, we're going to switch cameras because I'm going to show everybody um, the different light patterns that we use first. Am I good here? Yep. I'm good? Perfect. Are you kind of zoomed right in? I need close tight crop of Natalie when she grabs a seat. And can I turn off some of the ambient lights so that I just have the modeling light on my light here? What's that? Just, yeah, just cut any of those down just to get and this one too. Uh, actually, this one will be the best one to turn off. Perfect. Okay. So she's pretty dark now, right? I can't see the monitor, right? She's pretty dark. If I put a light on her, she's good, right? We can see that? Okay. All right. Are you okay with this light being in your face, Matt? So you've heard it all before, and we're talking about the different light patterns, okay? You've heard like modified loop lighting, split lighting, butterfly lighting, Rembrandt lighting. And I went over this, I believe, when I did my, um, the webinar on uh, business porches. But I'm going to go over it again, okay? Whenever I'm shooting a female, I always like to do what we call the modified loop lighting. And, and the loop comes from the shadow that is created from the light onto the nose, okay? And the reason I'm using this harsh spotlight is just so you can see that shadow a lot more defined, okay? I would never use a hard light like this on my, uh, on my subject, but I'm just using this for just demonstration purposes. You can see right here this shadow right that's created by the nose. Can you get, everybody see that? Can somebody type in and say, yeah, we can see that, or I'm sorry, we don't. Okay. 
And as I move in my light, that shadow either becomes longer, shorter, and it moves up and down, left and right, depending on where I place my light. Okay? So can you just pull your hair back? Matt? Perfect. So that's when we're talking about the loop. The loop is coming from the nose. Okay? Split lighting, very simple. We're splitting the, the face in half. Okay? We got half the face lit, the other half is in shadow. Okay? Flat lighting, everybody knows what flat lighting. That's what you get when you put your flash on camera, which is very, very awful. Don't ever do that. If you can, try to get your flash off camera. It's very flat. It's the same. It's even on both sides. Rembrandt lighting, or sorry, butterfly lighting on the other hand, now you can see the shadow just coming underneath the nose. Okay? And this is more of like a glamour type lighting, okay, when you get the light up high. Okay? And then you've got Halloween lighting, which is this one. All right? Coming up like that. Not very flattering for a woman either. And then, what I like is we've got loop lighting. And that's where you take the shadow of the nose, goes halfway between the lip and the nose. Okay? So you can just see it's halfway. An easy way to remember that is 45 degrees to your subject, 45 degrees up. Okay? That's 45, 45. It's very, very easy. Do not have that shadow touch the lip. Okay? Because then you're getting into that Rembrandt lighting where you get the little triangle of light right there. I always try to have that, okay? Now, if my subject moves, can you turn your body this way? You have to move the light with it, okay? Turn back. If you're in the studio and you're photographing your subject and you're turning them left and right, but you're not actually moving your light with the subject, we are changing the light pattern completely on your subject. Right here, I've got very nice loop lighting. Turn your body this way. Now she's flat lit. Turn your body the other way. Keep going. Now she's almost split lighting, or you just see half the face. So if I was to actually turn her, I would be moving the camera, and I would be moving my light at the same time. Everybody got that? That's good? Okay, you can stand up. We can crank those lights back on. All right. Now, you know, you can get away with a, we're back on this camera here. Good. You can get away with using, you know, window light for a great portrait. You use whatever you have, right? You can use one light, two light, three lights, four lights. You can use 25 lights for all your matter. Uh, I tend to use, let me see here, I usually go one, two, three. I usually go three lights. Three lights is my minimum, okay? I usually have a main light, which is right now is going to be this big soft box. I use reflector for a fill light. I don't like using a light behind the camera as my fill, so I always use a reflector. We've got a nice background by who, Carrie? We got a nice background by Silver Lake. Silver Lake. And I mean, right now, I, we didn't choose this background for whatever reason. It's just the one that's up. I'm not changing backgrounds during this session. But I must admit, I love this background. And I'm going to buy this background. Actually, I'm just going to blow it from Carrie. So I've got my main light. I'm going to put a spotlight in behind my subject using uh, a light with a, this one's a 10 degree honeycomb grid. Maybe I'll use a 20 if I pop one out somewhere, just to add a little bit of a spotlight. And then I'm going to use one more light back here as a kicker light to add some separation. So when my subject comes in, I'm going to get a little bit more business on you. In my studio, I very, very seldom have a, a client come in and I'm going to photograph them right away. Like, hi, how you doing? I'm James. Now come grab a seat and boom, 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 boom. Um, for my studio, I do consultations for every portrait. Okay, now it'd be different if I was just doing the single shot Facebook, uh, you know, website type thing where everybody's coming in. But if I was going to, when you're, when you're booking that session or you're talking to the client, because it's just going to be a very quick session, you want to get, put them at ease as much as possible. So try to get to know your clients as much as you can. Get their name, talk to them on the phone, find out what they like. When they come in for their session, sit down with them, get to know them a little bit, and don't put them right in front of the camera in two minutes because, uh, you know, they might be a little bit stiff and... Uh, and awkward, but you know, I talked to Nat for two minutes. I told her who I am, what I was, and stuff like that. And she's all good now. We're best friends. She's my BFF now. She's already got me on the Facebook and stuff like that, right, Nat? Yeah. yeah. See, so we're all good. Okay, so let's start. Um, in my studio, not this one, but I'm going to my main light. I always like to have at f8. I like having f8 on my subject. The only reason is because eight's my favorite number. 
So when I got into photography, it was F8. If you go back on my previous webinars, I believe I said the same thing, so I'm not lying. Okay, or I believe my lie and I keep saying it. So eight's my favorite number. So I usually go for F8 on my subject. The background, if it's a dark, I'm probably going to go eight and a half. If it's a light background, I'm probably going to go 5.6 F8. My kicker light, which is also kind of my hair light, all, is all going to depend on uh, the hair color. So again, it's always different for every subject, right? Nat has dark hair, so if I'm at F8, I'm going to be setting my hair light, kicker light, probably around eight and a half. Uh, if our other models are blonde, then you know what, that's going to be a little too hot on them, and I'll have to lower that down to maybe about 8. So, let's um, set up a shot, shall we? I have a camera around here somewhere. Nat, I'm going to set you up, but I'm just going to have you sit in first while I get my light set up, and then I'm going to stand you up. So again, because I'm looking for that nice light pattern, my big softbox here is it's going to be at 45 degrees. Just for a simple portrait like this, um, you know, I like to have it at 45 degrees. So let's uh, see if I can get F8 on my subject. Now I've already done a custom white balance. That is one thing i already done. Okay? So normally, I've got a flash meter here. Uh, normally I do a custom white balance for all my studio shots. Okay? I use a gray card. I'm a Canon. I use a gray card and it works. I, uh, for those of you that might ask, this is a very old Sekonic light meter. For those of you that are going out and into photography and you want to go buy a light meter, please do not go spend four or $500 on a new light meter. Go out and buy the cheapest thing you can because all you needed to do is tell you what the flash is doing and what the sun's doing. You don't need all that other crap all the stuff that, uh, that it does. So save your money and buy good lenses. All right, let me see what I got here. This is only going to hurt a little bit. See, that is perfect. Now, uh, because these are very powerful lights, I've got my ISO set down to 50, just so I can get, uh, I was at uh, 100 and it gave me uh, F11, so I just dropped it down to ISO 50, so I'm actually getting F8 right on that space. So that's perfect. Now, I can shoot, uh, I can shoot a shot just like this if I wanted to, but the background is going to be very dark. She's got dark hair, so there's going to be no separation between her hair and the background. The only thing that's going to be lit is just this side of her face. So, you know, I don't want that. So I'm going to add in another light on the background, and I'm going to bring in a reflector. You know, would you like me to take a shot? Hey, look, Brian, look. Would you like me to take a shot just to show you what I mean? I mean, I can do that, eh? It's going to show up, right? Sure. Let's just take a quick shot. Just to show you the difference. When I'm in... Uh, when I'm photographing in my studio, I will kind of have everything set up beforehand. Okay? I will have my kicker light set up in place. I would have my background light set up in place and my main light so that my subject's not sitting there waiting while I do all this. Okay? We're doing this strictly for demonstration purpose. Uh, all I would do is get my subject in there, take a test shot, and then make whatever changes I have to do. Maybe I have to up the kicker light a little bit higher or just finesse the main light a little bit. You do not want to be playing around with all your lights when your subject's sitting there because it's going to get them very uncomfortable. Now, one thing I do always say to my, my, um, my subjects, now, Nat, because everybody's different, okay, I'm going to have to finesse my lighting a little bit, so I might be moving my lights up and down. It's not you, okay? So you're, you're perfect. It's me. I just have to make some, some subtle little changes. So don't think that it's you, okay? So let me get this up. All right. Let me just do a quick shot. I'm just going to turn your body this way just a bit. Okay, so this is just a shot. Now, what I'm saying is the background is going to go dark because i got no light on it. The only light I have is on the side of the face. Her hair is going to go dark, so there's going to be no separation. Okay? You could get away with it okay, as a portrait, but I wouldn't. Right? So we want to make this a little bit better. So if I had two lights, because somebody always asks that, well, what if I only had two lights? If I had two lights, then uh, you know, would I use a kicker or would I use a fill light? Um, I would actually use the background light because the background light would add some separation to my subject. So I need my flash meter that I just put down somewhere over there. Why don't you show them your juggling act while I'm doing this? No? Okay. <laughs> All right, so I got a light here with a honeycomb grid on it. Let's just kick this sucker on. Turn the power down. 
And let me just see. I'm looking for this. I'm looking around eight and a half. And I don't think. There we go. I don't hear that pop. It's not working. So I got F11 right there. So I'm just going to bring it down a little bit more. A little bit more. Perfect. All right. No matter how well you pose your subject, if the lighting's bad, it's a bad portrait. Okay, so lighting and posing go hand in hand. I wish, when I got into photography, I wish I learned posing first before I learned lighting. Okay, um, but I didn't. So I'm still kind of learning it. I'm not a guru or anything. I'm not a master. I'm telling you that right now. I'm just telling you what works for me. Uh, but posing was always something I struggled with. Okay. And, uh, but I just kept at it. I kept watching webinars. I kept asking questions. I kept posting pictures, which is really important for your forum members. Okay, you've got a forum. You've got professionals on there. You've got studio owners. People have done it. So you know, when you're taking your pictures, post them on Photography Schoolhouse. Ask questions. One thing I know with like no BS, and I know it's the same with with Carrie's forum. If you ask questions and somebody says, "Well, you did it wrong," they're not trying to be spiteful or anything. They're just giving you a good constructive criticism. And one thing that I learned when I was um, getting into uh, photography was that I took that criticism in and I used it. I didn't think they were being mean or anything. I said, hey, you know what? You know what you're talking about. So thanks for that. It hurts sometimes to hear somebody say you did it wrong, but we're all there to help, right? So please, for those lurkers out there, because I know that you've got lurkers on your forum, Carrie. I know you do, because we all do. Uh, start posting. That's the fastest way you will grow. All right. So I threw in a background light, and I'm just going to do the exact same shot. See if everything goes off. So now you can see the background light behind her. And we've got a little bit of separation. Okay, we haven't even gotten into posing yet. Again, I would have this all set up, you know, before my subject even got in there. All right. So for me, like I said earlier, I like to use a reflector for fill. I find when I used to use another softbox, or another umbrella behind the camera or off camera that I found uh, it was a very fine line between too much and not enough and I just could not I could not get it so I learned very early on just to use a reflector and bring it in nice and close just to fill in that shadow what I like to do is I take my main light and I'll just feather it across my subject just a bit so that it actually bounces into a reflector and back into my subject okay and if you want to know if you're actually hitting the reflector, you get right behind your subject, okay, and you actually look into the reflector. And if you see the reflection of the light, then you know it's actually hitting. Now, this reflector here is a gold one. I'm just going to point it out. Uh, it's, so it's going to add a little bit of warmth to the image. Okay, I use all silver reflectors. I'm just using what works. And you know what? And it's going to work well with this because we have a nice warm background as well. Okay, so I'm going to show... This is just to fill in. I'm going to do this really quick again, just to show the difference between these two images. Just like that. OK, that's without the reflector. This is with the reflector. Good, just like that. I haven't looked at the image, but hopefully there's a difference. <laughs> is there a difference between the two? Yeah, beautiful, beautiful. Now. One thing when you're doing a, um, a studio portrait, I always make sure that you've got catch lights in the eyes. Okay, you can clearly see the catch lights in the eyes. Okay, I can see them. I always like those big catch lights. You know, for me, bigger is better. I like having a big softbox. Okay, if you got the room to use it, get it. I am a softbox guy over an umbrella guy. That's just me. That's just what I use. I like the big octodome. The only thing is, when you're doing, uh, like in my studio, my studio is very small you would actually be very, very, very surprised on how small my studio is. It is very, very small. But with the big softbox, sometimes it's so big that it spills on the background a lot, so I have a hard time. But I make do. But if you, ha if you have the chance to get a big softbox, get it. All right. So I've got that and that. I'm going to add one more light on camera right, and that's just going to be to light up this part of the hair, okay? Now, she's got darker hair. And if anybody was paying attention, what did I have my main light set to? I want somebody to type it in to make sure they're, uh, they're uh, listening. Anybody answering? 
Oh. Beautiful. So because she's got darker hair, I want to at least match it. Actually, I want to go over just a little bit. So I'm looking at about eight and a half, and that's just at, yes. Can I move that reflector? Is it in the way? This guy here? Sure. Okay. I'm just going to make some adjustments here, folks, so that you guys can see better because it's all about you guys because I love you. All right. Is that better? Everybody can see? Perfect. So I've got here, I don't know, what do you call those? Strip domes? Is that what they're called? Strip domes? Strip light. Strip light. Okay. We've got a strip light here. I, what I like to use in my suits, I will actually use another, uh, another mono light with a honeycomb grid and I'll get the spot right on the top of the head. But I don't have that right now, so I'm going to use this, which will work fine. And this will actually light up all back here, okay? So again, I want this at about, let's see if it's going to go off. Yeah. I'm only going to block you. I want it at about eight and a half. 2.8. So guess what? This sucker's got to come up. Ooh. F4. So I'm at F4 and I'm at full power, so I can't go any more power. What do you do? You bring it in closer. That's it. Just bring it in closer. There we go. A little bit closer. Perfect. There we go. That should add a little bit of separation. Again, the background light is adding separation, so I'm not too worried, but for those of you, and I need that reflector, right? Okay, let me just see if we got a little bit of, just like that. Yeah, perfect. You can see just a little bit on the side. Wow, you photographed very beautifully. All right, so, okay. So I kind of have my lighting down, right? Very, very, very simple lighting. We got F8, we got eight and a half in the back, and we got F8 on the kicker, and again, I'm using my reflector. You know what's nice? Another reason why I like my reflector is it's so easy to bring in and back and out uh, instead of having a big, huge mono light or something like that. Okay, so let's get down to posing now. You can stand up. Now, if I change anything or I move my subject around, then basically what I need to do is I need to move my main light and watch where my other lights are hitting. That's why sometimes I don't understand when people say, I did this session and I screwed up the lighting really bad through the whole thing. What did I do? Well, that's the first thing you didn't do is you didn't look at your nice little LCD screen on the back of the camera to see that you're screwing up halfway, so the second half will match much better. So, you know, don't be ashamed of actually checking your LCD screen to seeing what it does because that's what it's there for. It makes, uh, it makes things a lot easier. So. Give me a second here. Okay. So we got you like that. That's good. So again, two ways that I can photograph the female. I can turn her towards the camera or the, the light, 45 degrees, or I can turn her 45 degrees the other way. Okay. Very, very simple. And that's usually what I'll do for, for a female. I'll start like this. I'll photograph the one side, and then I photograph the other side. Sometimes it all depends on how they have their hair. And it all depends on, you know, if they're horribly scarred on one side of the face, you're not going to photograph that. You do it the other way. I'm just joking. Somebody type LOL. Lots of love. Okay. So first thing I do is I'm going to start this way, okay? Now, usually for something like this, headshot or whatever, I can just say just because that's the natural, this is the natural thing. Oh, and I'm going to harp on something right now. Okay, and this is for all you wedding photographers out there. And any chance I get to do this, I'm going to harp on you. Okay. Thing with guys and in, in weddings, okay? Any chance I can talk about this, I do it. Do not have the groomsmen stand like this, okay, in the bridal party. That means they got to take a leak, okay? This means they're at a funeral. Get the hands in the pockets, one in front of the other like that, and it'll relax them. There, that's my spiel. Okay. So, do you have pockets? You just put just your thumbs, just like that. Perfect. Okay. I need a little bit of a step stool. Do we have a little bit of a step stool that I can? because I am short. 
Actually, this will work right here. Perfect. All right, let's get to shooting here. Do, do, do. All right. Take a half a step back just a bit and over just a bit. Now, one thing I tell my clients too, and I'll do it right now, because now I'm going to give you the spiel about head tilts. Okay? And I always tell this to my clients um, right uh, before I'm about to photograph them. Okay? Because the head tilting is pretty important. Okay? So, when I say turning of the head, it just means turning your head left and right. Very, very simple. Okay? Uh, chin up and down is very, very, you will be surprised on how many people screw this up. Okay? The tilting of their head is just the top of the head. So if I say tilt that way, you're just tilting like that, yeah. And just go very, very slowly because what I'll do is I'll stop you, okay? So that's, always give that spiel because if you're saying turn your head this way, they're not going to know. So there's turning, tilting, and chin up and down, okay? All right, so I'm going to turn your whole body. And when I say turn your body, I want you to actually take little baby steps, okay? So I am going to turn just a little bit that way. Perfect, good, good, good. And just turn your, um, your face this way just a bit and tilt it half that little bit less perfect just like that and smile good 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 there's only one thing I'm gonna two things I'm gonna do always take a shot okay because normally this would be my first shot that I took of my subject take it look at it analyze it and make your changes right away and then start shooting okay all that set up beforehand again I'm repeating myself but that would have all been done beforehand this would have been the first shot I notice right away if that picture still up is it still up on the screen? Can you show that picture on the screen? You can't hear me when I talk to you, can you? Okay, so if you notice on the screen, I find the, the left side, which is camera left, is a little bit bright. And you can see how the kicker light's spilling over on the cheek just a bit. And I've got a little bit more shadow. So here's what I'm going to do. My quick adjustment after looking at this. I'm going to move the background light over to my left just a bit. I'm going to lower the main light down just a bit. I'm going to move the kicker light back. So it's just hitting the back of the hair, and I'm going to bring the reflector in. You should be able to know that right away, instantly, within like two seconds of looking at it, and say, here's my little changes. Just relax one second. I just got to change something up here. Move this over. Move that over. Do, do, do. Do, do. Turn that down just a bit. Actually, because it's as low as it's going to go, I'm going to back it up. Perfect. And I'm going to bring this in. Perfect. There. Now I should be able, now I should be good to go. Same, and I just unplugged my camera. Does that screw everything up? Okay. It happens once every time, doesn't it? Yeah, I thought so. Am I good to go? I'm good. All right. Sorry, folks. All right, so. Just like that, and smiling, perfect. There, beautiful, now I've made my changes. Now, just to let you know, for my head and shoulder shots, uh, I am a Canon guy, and I am using a 85 millimeter f1.8. That is my lens of choice when I'm just doing uh, like a head and shoulder shots like this. Okay, so, I can just do a few of these, okay? Good, just like that, good. Just tilt the top of your head, just half that. Perfect. Smiling. Good, good, good. Cross your arms. Yeah. Good. Just like that. Perfect. Keep smiling. Nice. We do one. A little bit of teeth. There you go. Perfect. Just like that. One more. One more. more. Just turn your head. Yeah, good. Chin up just a little bit. Perfect. Just like that. Perfect. Relax. Okay. So now, I've got her facing towards the, can, uh, the main light, 45 degrees. Now, if I was going to switch you and have you turn this way. Good, just like that. Cross your arms. Now I'm going to show you something that we should not do. Okay. Now, can you bring that up on the screen? You can relax that for a second. Now this is called, if I put the cursor up there, would they see my cursor at all? If I put the cursor up there, would they see it? No. They don't, eh? Okay, can I see that for a second then? This is called broad lighting. Okay, if we're looking at this as the center of the face, you can see from the nose to the ear, there's that much space. From the nose to the ear, not that much space. Okay, this is broad lighting. This is where I lit 
the bigger side of the face, if you will. Okay, it's not very flattering to females. It actually adds weight to them. Okay, I do like this pose though. I like how the arms are crossed and everything. But what you need to do is I need to bring that face and turn it back this way. Okay, so the rule of thumb when I photograph a female is back to the light, face towards the light. Okay, so if I turn you this way, and I go back to the light, so you're going to turn this way. Keep turning, keep turning, take baby steps. So her back is now to the main light. Turn your face back this way, just like that. Now I am actually lighting the short side of her face, and the broad side of her face is on the opposite side, which is a very more flattering, um, flattering pose. So just remember that little, little uh, blurb. Back towards the light, okay? Head back towards the light. Same thing when you're doing brides or anybody and you're doing window light, okay? If this was my window, okay, and I have my, th put the back towards the light, and turn the face in, okay, and it's very easy. And I tell them to turn the face until it cracks, okay? Once you hear that crack, you've gone, you know, far enough and it's perfect, okay? So, I'm gonna do two shots in a succession. I'm gonna show you one where we don't turn the face and then one where we do to the face. Let's just uh, cross your arms again, okay? And I'm going to just go like that. All right, so just stay like that and smile, okay? Now just turn your face this way. Good, smiling, perfect, good. So we should have a difference between the two, if you can go back and forth. I don't know if you can or not. No, okay, okay. So go back again. You know, when the video is recorded, you'll be able to just hit the rewind and go back and forth. Okay, so just remember that. So back towards, head towards, okay? Go back again, my dear. That, turn that way, good, good, good. Just bring the hands in. And it's always good, you know, talk to your subject, okay? Because they've never done this before, and sometimes they might feel nervous, so it's always good to encourage them, tell them to look great, because you do look great, right? And if you do your job well, they should look great, no matter who it is. So, you know, they're looking for guidance. So don't think that I'm kind of nitpicking and I'm being very finesse about, oh, I'll turn your head a little bit. It's not like we're physically grabbing their head. You know, back in the old days, you put them in the clamp. So I like to guide my subject as much as I possibly can, okay? Because it makes them a little bit more comfortable. And if it doesn't work, I tell them, you know? I just say, you know what, that's not working, my bad, just turn this way. Um, if you have somebody that's really kind of self-conscious about them and you pick that up right away, I would never sit there and say, no, that doesn't look right, that doesn't look good. I would actually, if I set something up and I said, okay, stand there, and I know this is not gonna look good, but I took the time to set it up, I'd actually take one or two shots, good, smile, good, and say, okay, let's change it up, okay? And then they don't know any better, okay? All right. So just turn there, good, 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 good. Tilt the top of your head this way, just perfect. Smiling, good. Bigger smile, give me a big T smile. Perfect, just like that. Good, relax. It's the same thing if I was going to sit my subject. Grab a seat. Same thing, I could turn her into the light Okay. Again, I'm always trying, when I'm turning my subjects into the light, I'm always having them looking at the camera, but the main light is always about a 45. Okay. It's always at a 45. 45, 45. Okay. Good. Just tilt the top of your head that way, just like that. Perfect. Good. Perfect. Just like that. Three, two, one. Good. Swing your hips around the other way. Good. So now the back's towards the light, and just turn your face back. Good. And smiling. Good, one more, give me the teeth. There, you got a beautiful smile. Perfect, you know? Just brush your hair back a bit. One thing you don't want to do, especially for us males, when you need to like change the hair, don't go like this. You don't want it. They don't like it when you do that, okay? Word of, uh, word of advice, whenever I photograph a female in my studio, I always have my wife present, or somebody present, always. Um, just to be on the safe side, you know. Plus, when you need to do a hair change, you know, like right now, I have a little bit of hair, I'd ask Marianne, can you come up? And just on the back, you see right there, yep, yeah, just perfect, okay? I don't want to go up and start messing around with the hair, you know, you don't want to make people feel, uh, feel uncomfortable, okay, especially when you just met them. Okay, so just turn your face this way just a bit, perfect, cross your arms, good. Smile and turn your face a little bit more. Perfect. Smile. You gotta smile. Perfect. Just like that. Good. Relax. It's pretty. It's really kind of that simple. 
Now, uh, the only thing I do differently, and I'm not actually going to take a picture, but I'll actually show you um, if we can, is sometimes they want a full length. Okay, and it's just because we don't have the backdrop pulled right out. But let's just say, let's just say it was a full length. Okay. If it was a full length, I'd be bringing my background light off camera just a bit. Angle, can you stand up that, please? Perfect. So full length, because we've always we've been shooting from the hip up, right? So is there any way to go uh, full length? Can we do that on there? Okay, so just, just put, perfect, just like that. I just want to see what we get for an angle here. I need, I need to shave or something. Yeah, that's good. Down just a bit. Perfect. So, again, we'd, I'd have you turn, turn towards the light. Good. Now, one key feature when you have them stand, okay, put all your weight on your back foot. So that, good. So let's go, put it opposite. Go opposite. Okay. See, I always want the weight on my subject's back foot, okay? So it's the foot that's not facing the camera. Because what it does is it just kind of kicks the hip out. So if they're like this, it's like, you know, ready to hitchhike or something, okay? But when you put all the weight in the back, Okay, this way you can get this. That has a nice little kind of S curve to it. Okay, so just put all your weight in the back. Perfect. And that way, if I wanted to turn your upper body this way, or I wanted to turn your back that way, it works. Okay, we always got that. So if you're going to turn the other way, so turn right around this way, put all your weight in the back foot, same thing, and then turn your upper body that way, back towards the light, right? Face towards the light. So turn, perfect, just like that. It's much easier. So just remember the back foot always has the weight. Okay, perfect. Okay, thank you very much. Any questions on that? There are a couple of questions. Well, okay, let's answer them. I think this is my water. How do you choose which side to put the main light on? Whatever side. Okay. Repeat, yes, the question was, how do I choose what side to put the main light on? It's whatever side the light will fit in my studio. <laughs> no, I just, I'm joking. You know, you know what? Actually, I'm kind of not. I have my light set on. It's on the left side. It's kind of just like this. Uh, because it's mounted on a boom arm, so it's kind of always there. Um, you know, if if the if the if the hair had a part on it, or half the head was uh, the hair was coming down, and that's the way they wanted it, and so I had to move it, then I move it. But you have to look at your subject and kind of determine on which side. It's funny somebody should ask that because I had my studio light mounted on a wall boom arm uh, up until last week, and I finally disconnected and put it back on a stand so that I can bring it around to the other spot because I realize that, you know, everybody's different. So, and again, some people do come in and say, please do not photograph this side of my face. Or if they have a lazy eye, okay, if they have a lazy eye, I got to switch things up, okay. So it, I decide it when I look at my subject. You know, that's, that's the easiest way to do it. Any other questions? Not all the time. It, it, oh yeah, sorry. Somebody was asking if I'm always shooting down uh, on somebody. Yeah, on the subject when I'm photographing. Yes, I do because I want to be king, man. I want to be top. I'm above all of you people. So I want to look down. No, I'm just joking. Um, I'm actually really. Uh, I'm actually very short. You know, I'm only four two. I may look uh, taller in uh, in the camera roll, but I'm really only four two. So hence why I'm kind of shooting up. But I'm trying. Uh, you know. Shooting down just a little bit um, makes them look a little bit thinner. Um, I kind of like having them, especially with the woman, when I'm shooting down, they're actually kind of looking up. It gives, you know, it shows a little bit more, especially like if you had a woman in a business suit and you had her kind of like this and looking up, you know, just a little bit. It doesn't have to be up like that, but just a bit gives them a little bit more empowering, makes them a little bit authoritative. It gives them, it just, you know, you look at them and there's somebody with confidence and stuff like that. So it probably is a habit that I tend to shoot my women a little bit from high, not to mention the fact that I'm only 4'2". So thanks for bringing that up because I'm actually really self-conscious about my height. And, uh, you know, now I'm going to sulk when I go home and probably cry myself to sleep. So. One more question. Yeah, yeah. Uh, tilting the camera as you take the picture. Sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. Uh, oh, yeah, sorry, I, gotta, I keep not repeating the question. Carrie's uh, reading out the questions. Uh, somebody was asking, you know, about tilting the cameras and stuff like that. Uh, sometimes I do, sometimes I don't. I usually try to do some with and some without. When I'm doing, uh, like I said, like let's just say this was Natalie Strictly Wanted Pictures, a headshot for her Facebook. Okay, it would literally be not even two minutes. I would basically bring her in and go something like this, click, 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 you know, click, 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 click. I do a couple of head tilts, um, camera tilts, click, 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 
crossing the arms, you know, bringing the back like this, same thing, tilt the head, turn back like this, click, click, click. And then if there's anything specific they wanted, you know, um, that's what I do. Uh, completely different when we're doing like a full glamour shoot or something like that. But again, this is just a straight, you know, your straight headshot. Like if I was to, photo, when I photograph um, uh, people at Christmas parties and stuff like that, I kind of do the same thing. I keep it very, very simple. And if it's a single woman uh, that has no date, that's pretty well how I'm going to photograph her at the Christmas parties and stuff like that. What if a person has one small eye? Do you adapt that or change the light of the post? Good question. Somebody was saying, what, um, if somebody has a small eye, uh, what do we do for that? Do I adapt for it? Uh, liquefy the crap out of that, man. You make it just like that. I mean, it's, it looks better like that. No, um, you, know, I, you know, I'll be honest with you. I don't do anything for it. Uh, if they have a small eye, they know about it, and we all do. Uh, you know, in the past, they were saying, oh, you try to put the small eye, the one towards the camera to make it look bigger. I don't know. I've never done that. That's just me. They say, they say, bring the small eye more towards the camera because it will look bigger, and the bigger eye will look smaller because it's farther away. But um, I don't know. I just... <laughs> you got a small eye. <laughs> I'm putting you back like that. No, I don't. I don't worry about it. You know, I really don't. Shutter speed. Yeah. Okay. Good question. Shutter speed. I'm in studio. My shutter speed is one one twenty fifth of a second. It's it's always been. It's that's what it is. One one twenty fifth f eight. That's my honestly. If I could never move my lights and have them all set, they would be f eight, and my camera would be one one twenty fifth. Let's get another subject in here. Kind of do the same thing. We'll just kind of, you know. Reiterate? Is that a word? Reiterate? Does that make sense? Yeah, okay. How small is my studio? My studio is 13 and a half feet wide by 21 feet long. Okay, so it's it's a, it's fairly long, but the 13 feet wide is uh, it's a little, and it's eight foot uh, eight foot ceilings. It's 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 small. So. I'm not shooting groups of 20 or stuff like that, um, but it works. Uh, it's funny because we were having this thing because I've actually photographed a Christmas party, you know, couples in a broom closet set up in the studio and stuff like that, so it works. So you work with what you got. You know, that, that's it. I have a small studio. If somebody calls and says we have a family of 20 we want family portrait done, I recommend them to somebody else, you know, because I can't do that. I can't, uh, you know, that's just me. Okay, you good? Another question? Let's, you, you ask a question, I can talk and keep going. We can ask a question. Come on in there, Bree. Come on in. Ask a question. I'm good. All applies. What do you mean if I was going to be doing like, like somebody was asking about the hands and fingers. Okay, my rule of thumb for hands and fingers Never poke the nose, okay? That's not very flattering. Um, I'm not a big hands and fingers guy. You won't see me doing stuff like this. You won't see me doing, you know, stuff. I, I, I will never, I don't do the hands on the chin type thing. That's just, that's just me. The only time you would kind of maybe see hands is like if they're like this. I try not to do this. When you do a crossing of the arms, you try not to do the, the, the hand right in like the armpit because it looks cut off, so you kind of try to like that. Uh, you know, if you're doing the collar type thing, I'll try to do that. But for me, I don't, uh, I don't kind of do that. Maybe. Depends if I had a little girl or whatever. I don't know if I answered your question or not, but it was a good question. Okay, hold on. I just swallowed the wrong way, so I got a cough. <coughs> Sorry. All right. This is Bree. Say hi, Bree. She said hi. All right. So same thing, you know, we're just, now, stand up for a second, Brie. She's shorter than that, okay, because I'm 4'2", she's about 4'2", as well, okay. All right, so, you know, I'm going to have to make a few little adjustments. The one thing I noticed right away is that she's got blonde hair, okay, so I'm going to have to watch my kicker light, because my kicker light was set for Nat, okay, and Nat, I had that at about 8 and a half. So now if I had eight and a half with the blonde hair, I might end up blowing some of that out. So I'm probably going to have to uh, knock that down a bit. Uh, but you know what? Again, we're just, I'm actually going to show you just how fast it is to whip off seven or eight images uh, with this lighting setup. Uh, headshots. Um, 
as we go. So again, uh, I did move some of these lights, so I'm just going to move them back into place. Really, really quickly. And this is, let's just pretend this is actually my real session. She just came in, and I'd say, Nat, can you just stand there for just for two seconds? Perfect. I'm just going to set this up. Take a half a step back, Bree, if you can. Perfect. Just like that. Did I call you Nat just now? I am do apologize. All right, Bree. Another thing I need to come over just a bit. Good. All right, so I've roughly kind of set up my, uh, my lights the way I think they should look good. Right? Sometimes you get lucky and you set it up and it's like bang, spanking on. Okay. Just turn your body this way just a bit. Good. Now, I'm going to do a test shot and then I'm probably going to have to play around with my lights a bit. Okay. So it's not you. I just, everybody's different. I have to change things up. Um, tilting of the head is pretty important. So when I say turn your head, it's just turning left and right. Yeah, perfect. Chin up and down, chin up and down. Tilting the head is the top of the head. You either tilt it left or right, and I'll usually go like this, and that's all it is. So the chin kind of stays into place, and it's just like that. Uh, when I say turn left, you just take the baby steps. Yeah, I want to hear the shuffling. Yeah, exactly. You can do this. <laughs> good. Good, good, good. So let me just do my test shot, and let me just see what I got here. All right. So just, um, just put your hands, just thumbs in the pockets. Good. Turn your upper body towards me just a bit, and just with there, just bring the hair just out just a bit. Perfect. Good, 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 good. Let me just see what everything's doing here. All right, so as you can see, I've got everything blown completely out. My hair light's got to come down just a bit. So this is what I did. I'm looking at the image. I'm going to move the, uh, keep that image up if you can. I'm going to move my background light over just a bit. I'm going to tone down the main light, and I'm going to tone down the kicker light because it's a little too hot. So when you shoot anything, you should be checking your exposure and everything off that first shot. Make your adjustments and then shoot. So that should be good to go. I think I moved the background light. I can't remember. Let me just see if we got a different there. Perfect. The only thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just kick up this background light to get a little bit more oomph to it. Perfect. All right. We are good to go. Stay just the way you are. Turn your upper body a little. Perfect. Right there. Smile. Good, 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 good. Nice. Keep smiling. Perfect. I got to wait for that background light to recycle. Actually, it's not going off. And there's a red light. It's dang it on chrome. Oh, there we go. Is that just the uh, slave? All right, hold on. Let me just see. Turn your upper body just a bit. Good. Let me just see what our background light's doing here. There. Perfect. All right. Perfect. Smiling. Good, 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 good. Turn your upper body just a little bit right like that. Perfect. Let me see some teeth. Good, 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 good. Cross your arms. Perfect. Nice. Hold on. Back up just a bit. Give me that smile. There you go. Just turn. Yeah, right there. Perfect. Good. Turn your whole body the other way. Just tilt, tilt, tilt. Good. Just like that. Take half a step, little step back. No, back towards the background. Perfect, right there. Good, good, good. Cross your arms again. Good. Now, just turn your face this way just a bit and look at me. Turn your upper body just a little, right there. Smiling. Nice, just like that. Perfect. Turn a little bit more upper body and look at me. Nice. Good, keep smiling, keep smiling. Good, 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 good. Just put your hands in the thumbs and pockets. Good, turn your upper body just a bit. And bring your face right, the eyes right to me, just like that. Smile. Nice. Give me teeth. There you go. Good. Relax. Very, very, very quick. Very, 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 very simple, right? I actually didn't have to move my lights at all, okay? When I had you turn this way, good. If I would have shot her just like that, I would have had to have moved my camera angle and my light around. But all it is just turn your face back. I'm still getting that nice loop lighting formed right there. Okay, so it's very, very quick. I mean, we just ripped off a bunch of different shots very, very quickly. Again, they're only from here up. If I was doing a full length shot, it'd be a little bit different. Uh, I'd add that in there. But for these quick little things, so if you were doing like a Facebook day or, uh, um, you know, avatar day or, uh, or profile picture day or something like that, I mean, you could literally rip off uh, in a day. How many people? 50, 60. I would actually literally schedule it for every three minutes. I'd do somebody else. Um, that's how quick it is. Um, let's, let's do, if we got some questions people can ask, let's 
do what something. If they have a skirt, if they have a skirt, you know, right away. Well, if, this, if, if it's a skirt, I'm not, uh, okay, you're talking about the hands and pockets. Okay, let's just assume you have a skirt on, okay? Again, because, because I'm going from here up, okay, it was really just I didn't want this. So I would just go, turn your body this way. Good. Put all your weight on your back foot. The other way. All your weight on the back. There you go. So when you're doing it, you're going to be like this, okay? You go, just bring that. Perfect. Just like that. So I go like hands on hips for that, right? Bring them down just a bit. I still, I always like crossing of the arms for a woman. So you can go, if they had a skirt, I'd keep it just like that. Just put the hands on the hips, good. Turn your face that way just a bit. Now bring your eyes to me. Yeah, smiling, good. They can just do this. Good, smile. Good, hold on. Give me the teeth. So I do something just like that. Okay. And then I do like the arms crossed and stuff like that. Let's, uh, what do you have for stools here? Relax Brie for a second. We got this one here. Okay, let me see something. Bree. Come grab a seat here. Is that too high? You can lower it just a bit. Grab a seat. Don't sit on my finger, that gets awkward. Go a little bit more. Good. Is that comfy? What do we have here? Oh, I like this one here. I'm just getting stools. I didn't leave you people. I know you miss me. I know you're wondering. Turn your legs that way. Good. Let's see how high this is. You can actually grab a seat right on the seat. Like, just get right on. Yeah, perfect. Let me see if. Hey, Nat. Come on a second. you just come in right like that, okay? And I'll probably shuffle you over. Sisters, right? Let's just say we got sisters. They're sisters. So they're happy, like, they're not sisters, okay? But if they were sisters, you know, getting them in closer together, uh, I'd do something like this. So I'm going to slide that over just a bit. So you're going to try to slide the whole chair. I don't want to grab it. Just slide it. A little bit. Right there. Good. Slide right in. You're going to come as close as you can. Good, good, good. And bring that down just a little bit. So if you grab that lever, just sit on yeah, it? I'll tell you when. Doesn't go any lower, and that doesn't go any higher. All right, I'll, I'll wait. Normally, when I try to put two or more people, like sisters or something like this, uh, I try not to have the faces on the same level. Okay, I try to offset it. Rule of thumb is you put the eyes to the mouth. Okay, so I'm gonna kind of say uh, keep the same lighting here, and all I'm gonna do is just. Just move my background light, or the kick a light, just a bit. And I'm going to do a test shot, and then I'll... So this would be something I would do. So you're actually going to come right in close. You're going to stay like that. Good, good, good. Come in even closer than that. Slide the whole thing right in. Good, good, good. And try to go as tall as you can. Good, just like that. Now, let me just see here. So Brie, you're going to stay just like that. You're just going to turn your face this way. You're going to lean in that. And you're going to turn your face that way too. Good. And just tilt the top of your head that way. Perfect. So it'd be just like this. And just do a test shot here. Nice. I'm just going to change the background light. So if they were sisters, I'd do something like this. You know, good for mom and dad. Get them in nice and close. Now, not just turn your upper body. So bring your lean in. But yeah, just like that. And tilt into her. Good. And lean over her at the waist. Come right in closer together. There you go. Just like that. Perfect. I do something just like that. Smiling, ladies. Good, 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 good. Okay, relax. So that'd be one shot I'd do. Stand up, both of you. Actually, let me. Let me see. Matt, grab a seat. Good. That's not bad. See, I can have you. You're just gonna just come in really close. Okay. Sisters, right? We try to show love between them. Come right in close, so I'm going to have you bring your butt forward, yeah, and lean right in now, and just turn your face that way, and good. And now you're just going to turn, good, just like that. Looking here, both of you, smiling, nice. So be just like that, reaching up just a bit, and tilt in like that, perfect. Smile, just bring that one hair just back. Perfect, smiling, both of you, nice. You know you do black and white, 
tight crop. Relax, ladies. Very, very, very simple. Okay? How come it looks like crap on that screen, but it looks awesome on that one? Yeah, perfect. Okay, you guys relax. You're free. You're free. Any questions on that? Now, does it work just on hot young girls? No, it works on hot older women too. Let's find out. Can you do me a favor, Marianne? Can you come for it? Same thing. I'm going to use the exact same lighting. It works for everybody. I don't, nothing's different. So, I'm going to have you stand first, my dear. Okay. Marianne, say hi to everybody. Hello. All right. Watch, I'm going to take this out. Now, so again, I kind of set everything up rough. Okay. I'd have Marianne standing here. I'm going to do the exact kind of same thing. Okay. I'm just going to make sure that I got the lighting on everything because I did change things around. So, Marianne, I am going to do a test shot. And I'm going to look at my lighting and I might just have to change a few little things. It's not you. It's me. You know that. So everything changes. I've got to bring that down just a bit. Perfect. And our background lights. Is that F8? I'm going to crank it up just a bit. How are we doing for time? We are good? We are good. Any questions while I'm doing this? Make one up if there isn't. Questions are good. Well, what's your view? You're shooting with a 5D Mark II. I am shooting with the 5D Mark II, and I noticed they just announced the new 1D 500,082 megapixel something, because Canon just released a new camera. Overkill, in my opinion. You know when I'm going to change cameras? When this one breaks. <laughs> That's when I'm going to change. Yeah, Canon just announced a big, huge bad boy. It's actually very, very nice. But I'm using the 5D Mark II. Um, you know, I've had it for a while, full frame. I do a lot of mining industrial shots, so that's what works. Now, I didn't even have to tell Marianne to pose or anything. She just kind of stood there like that, which is, I tell you, if I don't tell you to do anything, it's because you've already been doing it, okay? So let me just turn your whole body this way just a bit. Good. Chin down just a bit. Good. And I've got to get my reflector in. So Marianne is looking to update her profile pic on hotmamas.com. So that's what we're going to do for you. All right. Good. Smiling. Just like that. I just got to back up a bit, and I need to change my background light. I love the way the hair light's looking. I just need to change that guy. So again, I took my test shot, looked at it really quickly, made my changes. We are ready. I think with that background, man. let me just see here. There we go. Okay, I just need a smile now. There you go. Good, 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 good. Now, tilting of the head. Okay, I'm going to tell you. You guys looking at my butt? No? Okay. I'm going to conscious a little bit. Tilting of the head, Marianne. So turning is left and right. So just turn your head left and right. Good, good, good. Chin up and down. Good. Tilting of the head is the top of the head. Just tilt left, tilt right. Perfect. When I say turn your body, it's just baby steps. Got it? Is that a yes? Yes, sir. Okay. Yo, oh, yes, sir. Well, 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 well. I like you. <laughs> Beautiful. Good, good. Just go hands just on hips. Both hands on hips. Good. Lower just a bit. Turn your whole body this way. Keep turning, keep turning. Good. And just turn your face this way. Good. And smile. I need the smile. There you go. Perfect. Good. Turn your whole body that way. So again, all your weight's going to be on the back foot. Perfect. Now I've got her back turned towards the main light. So now I'm going to turn the head back. No, she already did it. Just turn your upper body this way just a bit now. Perfect. Just like that. Smiling. Perfect. Oh, I'm going to move the background light just a bit. Because I moved you just a bit. So I just need to move this a bit. There we go. Perfect. Turn your face. Nope. Okay, look right at me. Straight. Good, good, good. Just turn your face. So turn. Keep going, keep going, keep going. Good. Tilt the top of your head this way just a bit and chin down just a little bit. Right there. Now I need that smile. There. Beautiful. Just like that. Good. Relax. Just like that. Very, very simple. And then I finish off. I do the arms across the shoulders. I could even have her sitting down, stuff like that. Very, 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 very simple. Okay. 
very, very tough. She's taller than me, which is why I had to get higher because I'm 4'2", she's 6'4". There's a big height difference there, right? Good, thank you. Any questions to photographing the single female? Good, I like that. If you don't have any questions, you guys know it all then? So we're good. I did my job well then. For stray hairs, do you do anything? Uh, do you just do you know what yeah. to photograph? Or do you, do you know what good question. Somebody was asking for stray hairs. Uh, you know, I try to very carefully, you, if you get flyaways, especially when you have like the blonde hairs, and you've got the kicker light coming in behind, it will highlight those stray hairs considerably. And that's where I usually get my wife or assistant to kind of come in and just, or I'd ask them to, to tone down, okay? Worst case scenario, I just uh, do that. But then if they're still dominant in the photograph, you know, of course in Photoshop, I remove those. All, all images that go to my studio are fully retouched. You know, retouching only takes not even three, four minutes per image to fully retouch a uh, any portrait studio. So I remove those all with the clone stamp in Photoshop. I do not leave them in. Any, excuse me, any tips for heavier single females? Date them. <laughs> Same thing. I mean, uh, you know, heavier set, you know, you try to get a little bit, uh, you never want the chins down, okay, because it'll Okay, that didn't work. You know, you, you, you usually want a little chin up. Try to get a little bit higher, okay? Never sh uh, broad light, okay? Do not broad light them. Always short light them. Hence, when you have them like this, again, you don't want to photograph them like this where you're lighting the broad side because broad side, it adds weight to anybody, okay? Shooting that. I mean, for some, it might, be, it might work, and you might do it. I'm not saying never do it, but... Most of my portraits, I've always tried to short light my subject. So even if I had the back, if you have a heavier set woman and you have the back, that's where you turn them in. Okay, you always want to light the short. So you know, chin up just a bit. Try to get maybe a little bit of a higher angle uh, and stuff like that. Um, you know, if you have a heavier set and you're doing a family portrait, you know, maybe get uh, the heavier set person behind somebody halfway. You know, stuff like that. I mean, it all depends on who you're photographing. But you, you know, you got to be conscious of that, right? Uh, and do it tactfully. Yes. Um, oh yeah, sorry, I gotta repeat. Somebody was asking about the reflectors because I was using gold, and I must admit, the gold actually looked nice. It did add a nice warm, I might have to go break my gold one out. It had a nice warm tone and uh, with the background. And somebody was asking if I, because uh, I, I like the silver, and if I ever use white, I probably should have clarified a bit. My, all my reflectors are silver on one side, and then the flat white on the other. And of course, you know, I'll, depending on what my subject is, who it is, uh, I sometimes use the silver and I sometimes use the uh, the white. I mean, outdoors, if it's cloudy, I'm using white or silver. And if it's sunny, I'm going to use the white because you don't want to blind them. Studio 2 depends how much more light I need to lighten up the shadows in my subject's faces. So I will be switching between the, uh, the um, silver and the white. So yeah, so I don't just use silver. I use silver and white. Thanks, that was a, that was a good question. But I am liking the gold. I think I might have to take this one too. He's my new best friend. Any other questions? No, I think we're good. We are good? Okay. Well, you know what? I'll get Carrie back in here to sign me off, but thank you very much. If you have any other things you want me to do for a photography schoolhouse diddle cam, please just let Carrie know. I love doing these. Uh, I can pretty well do, I'm not, don't mean as a brag, but I can kind of do whatever you guys want. I mean, uh, right now Carrie has been kind of choosing what I do and, uh, and me, but if you guys have something specific, and it doesn't necessarily just have to be studio stuff if you want to either see like um, you know anything in marketing if you want to see any Photoshop type stuff or uh, you know how I do some of my events I do a lot of events and stuff like that uh, like my dog days and stuff like that, that oh, I uh, do have one question certainly go. one of the things about this lens which lens were you, were you using uh, that's again? the 85 uh, 1.8 1.8 yeah. and you're not filtering or doing any softening in camera you do all of that's that in post production exactly yeah I'm shooting JPEG uh, I just made sure that my exposure was good, my white balance was good. I did do custom white balance with these lights in this background which beforehand. Um, but yeah, I'm not doing anything. And even in my post-production now, I've really kind of toned it down. Like for any of these portraits, I will spend a maximum of three minutes total and have that completed, ready to go to print. Uh, because there's not, I don't have to fiddle around with the exposure. I don't have to fiddle around with uh, the colors and stuff like that. It's right. bang. 
Uh, and that lens, which is the 85 uh, 1.8, that was my very first autofocus lens. Really? So I've had that since uh, the autofocus film days. Well, you guys, I don't know if you saw it at home, but I had the benefit of sitting at the main monitors that the camera is tethered to. And the pictures, just with just the soft lighting, uh, look so beautifully soft. I'd, I'd almost have thought that there was a soft focus filter on the lens. Well, one thing that was to my advantage is all the women here had beautiful skin, so that helps. But again, I did have the big soft, you know, this, the, 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 I mean, this, this is a big soft box. And I mean, and it's true, the bigger your soft box, the softer your light. Okay, so this, this, yeah. is, this is a big soft box, right? It really is. This so, is, incidentally, is Denny's 4x6 uh, uh, foot softbox. It is the lightest thing I've ever seen, and it sets up in a blink. You know what else uh, is? You know what else is that I find with these big softbox too is uh, it's the fastest way to mimic window light when mm -hmm. you're in a studio. Yeah. So again, you've got this nice soft light coming through here. If I had the little wee soft boxes like that, of course, it's going to be a little bit harsher and uh, and uh, you know a little bit uh, more contrasty lighting, but. I tend to like to go with my studio portraits as big as I possibly can in studio with my softbox. I like to go as big as I can without yeah. spilling light onto like the background. I still like to have my lights controlled. I do like my controlled light. Absolutely. So I just you work with what you got. So. Well, I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I want to thank James for coming over from NoBS. No problem. And always a pleasure to have him here. We'll have him back. And again, if you want to send me some email messages. Don't forget, Photography Schoolhouse, No BS Photo Success, Inferno, Nashville, That's right. next month. Unfortunately, I won't be there because I'm photographing a wedding in Cuba, which was preordained before right. you guys set this up. But, I mean, I've done them all, and you guys want to learn the fastest and get to know your members and get to know the members in No BS, get to know the members in Photography Schoolhouse. I'm telling you right now, it'll be the best investment of your life. I learn, and I'm usually the one that's actually doing some of the instructing in mm -hmm. that. I learn more from my members when I do an inferno. Right. Just by sitting around and talking to them and seeing what they're doing, I learn more than actually being on the forum. As bad as it sounds, yeah. because we're both forum owners. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what? You guys should really take part of this stuff because it will change your life. Well, the infernos, uh, even though James won't be there, and that's sad, Rob, of course, his business partner from NoBS will be there. Sandy Putsch is going to be our keynote speaker. <sighs> okay, like, come on. That's, seriously, you guys? <laughs> yeah. I knew that. Yeah, well, trying to hype it up a bit. That yeah. was a good reaction shot. <laughs> yeah, you like that? Yeah. Well, really? Well, <laughs> if, uh, you know, that's, that's, where, that's the reason to go right there. Yeah. So uh, we've got a great lineup of speakers. You got Warren. Warren. We got, we got Warren. Warren. Warren's Warren. amazing. Um, my mind's gone blank, of course. You got but Kyle Brady, Kyle which is, Brady you know, your marketing and your, if your social networking. That's really good. Awesome. I remember I read all the lineup. It's amazing. I yeah, wish I was going. It's a great lineup. I'll be thinking of you guys when and, I'm drinking my margaritas. Uh, we have decided to hold the line. We, we had expired the early bird pricing. We're holding the early bird pricing. We're going to try and hold it open for another few days. So no BS members, PSH members, you can get in at the early bird pricing. It's $100 off the regular price. So... This is the time to do it. Make your decision now. I want to thank everybody for coming tonight. I want to thank, thank our, our models, models Brianna, thank our Natalie, cameraman, our behind Marianne, the scenes cameraman, you know, and uh, our production crew. Uh, this will be posted. This is recorded, and it will be posted both on the PSH Gold Forum and on the NoBS Forum as well. So if you want to review some points and, and review his technique, you're going to be able to look at it as much as you want. So thanks again, everybody. We've got more productions coming up. Keep your eyes on your newsletters, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Chicken. 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 Chicken.